All right, here we are. And guess what? Real quick, from the beautiful Pacific Northwest and land of plaid and coffee, wanted to say thank you so very much for being here. And from Pack West Bigfoot, from myself and my family to yours, we wish you a very merry Christmas and holiday season. So, with that, real quick, for those of you who are new here, just to let you know, um, I've got a lot of good friends out here from Gunnar Monson to Shane Corson to... Um, um, uh, you know, William Jevening, all those guys do great, great research. You can check them out at their websites from MonsterX Radio to WilliamJevening.com and beyond. Great research. Here, what I like to do, and you guys, uh, you know, that you're, you've been around here for a long time, uh, what I like to do is take some of these uh, basic uh, reports and things like that and turn them into to kind of campfire fire stories for you guys to listen to and enjoy when you're not out there on the trail trying to find this thing and uh, doing your research. <coughs> Or you're sitting in that cubicle at work and you decided to take that smoke break and you wanted something cool to listen to. Um, that's what I'm trying to do here. And uh, I also appreciate you guys, um, you know, sitting through the commercials. That helps to kind of pay for all of this stuff here and get my time in there and, and uh, you know, hosting and all kinds of crazy stuff. So I um, just want to say thank you very much for sitting through those. Um, uh, you know, this Christmas, I just wanted to say that one of my, my true blessings out here is you guys, and uh, uh, is you, and I totally, totally appreciate that, so thank you so very much, God bless you guys, and uh, I'm always praying for you guys that you have a blessed and a wonderful life, so <clears throat> let's get on to this week's PacWest Bigfoot Encounter Story. December, this is a funny one guys, December, <laughs> and the Bigfoot of Hayauchi. My wife and I wanted to get away that Christmas. It was the last one where it would be just the two of us. We just found out days before that we were, well, she was pregnant. And that was not the only surprise we'd get that holiday season either. We would come to know that there really are some pretty scary creatures out here in the Pacific Northwest, and I mean a menacing kind of scary too. Here's what happened back in the early 2000s just outside of Hachi, California. Welcome to Hayachi. I hope I am, by the way, <coughs> pronouncing that. There's four different pronunciations of it, guys. So, <coughs> we were pregnant with our first child. We learned this fact just before Thanksgiving, actually. And right before, we were taking off on a month-long trip, just the two of us. We had a fifth wheel we purchased while our house was being built, and we decided to take it on a road trip for the rest of the holiday season. Yes, we had the money at the time, even today. Back in the early 1990s, my wife and I had started a small business that became a small company, and we sold it for a lot of money. Typical American dream, I suppose. Today we still work, but from home as consultants. But we had the time, the money, and we really wanted to see the Pacific Northwest was truly like. We had some friends who had moved uh, here to Nebraska from Oregon, somewhere near a place called Salem, I believe. Anyways, they were full of great stories and conversation about the beauty of the Pacific Northwest, and one night we admitted to ourselves that we were intrigued by what they had to say about the place. And since we had been everywhere else, why not? Why not head out to the Pac West that very next year? So, there we were, pregnant and hitting the road, heading to the deep dark forest of the Jedediah Smith Redwood State Park. There was, however, one conversation in which we heard them mention the monster of the woods, Bigfoot. Of course, the wife and I tossed that out as if they were talking Loch Ness and aliens, but I guess we should have asked more questions, to be honest. It had snowed. We arrived with the fifth wheel just outside the small town of Hayauchi, finally. It had snowed a day before we got there, not a lot, but a couple inches it seemed, and it was still cold enough and cloudy enough to keep it from all but melting away. We had 25 days to enjoy, basically, until the 1st of January, when we would head back home. Nothing really started until about a week before Christmas itself, and it was nothing that would scare us off. It was just odd and a bit weird, but yes, a bit worried we did feel started with noises and not just any noise but like there was something running around the area at night at least that's what we'd, we heard at first it was the week before and we had just come back from visiting the coast when that evening pretty late actually i thought i heard something bump lightly up against the fifth wheel 
As I woke up, I could hear something run off, but I could not be sure if it was two-legged or four. I gave it up to a large animal, like a deer, possibly a black bear that was that that I was told was all over the place here. Matter of fact, I'd already seen one passing through town a few days earlier. Either way, it did have a sound of being something rather large and heavy. I headed uh, back to bed without waking my wife. The next morning, however, she would have her own interesting moment to share. It was about 3 a.m. when she would remember that she forgot her prenatal pill. Being my little worrywart, she decided to get up and take it. They were left in the truck on accident. She headed out to get them, and on her way back with the bottle, she thought she heard a growl of some kind and a, <clears throat> a huffing-like sound. A split second later, she heard something moving off from the other side of the fifth wheel and out of the area. Well, we sat and talked about it over breakfast, but the thought of asking a neighbor if they'd heard anything was out of the question, as we were the only ones around the area. We were at least a half mile from town to the west. Who's talking now? So, another night or two went by without much of anything. However, I swore one night I heard howling in the hill, hills, but I gave it up to coyote or wolves. But for a couple nights after that, everything was relatively quiet and calm. It was my wife who heard it first. Unfortunately, she was up with some morning sickness issues all of a sudden. She was coming out of the restroom and she, when she hears mumbling, like two people outside talking or chatting back and forth in low masculine voices she woke me up feeling a bit scared of course I, I did get my gun out and held it loosely in my hand I did not turn uh, I did not turn on any more lights than the night light that was lit over the front room area the mumbling did continue and it seemed to be to come from the north side of the road side of the fifth wheel the voices were deep very deep. Neither of us could make any sense out of what they were saying exactly. It was like some weird, never before heard language full of a kind of rambling that didn't, that, that, that contained like grunts. And honestly, I, I, I don't really have any words to describe it. Some folks, I've read about at least, say it sounds like some kind of Russian or Chinese in a way. I can't really attest to that, to be honest, but it sure was weird sounding, and it was not English. We sat there on the edge. <clears throat> uh, in, uh, we sat there, and the edge uh, of a couple seats in the living room uh, area where we'd moved. Suddenly, my wife let out a shriek before she covered her mouth. She said she saw movement behind me through the window. She could not be sure it was a person, but she said she swore it was a shoulder and the side of a head she saw. That would place that thing at least around seven to eight feet tall compared to the ground and up to that small window of the fifth wheel. The mumbling died off after about ten or so minutes, and eventually we headed to bed, but talked into the night about what or who it could have been out there, wandering around the fifth wheel, chatting it up in the middle of the night. Morning came, and we decided to, we would get our Christmas shopping done in Crescent City for each, of, uh, for each other. Before we left home, <clears throat> we promised we would not buy anything for each other for Christmas until we got to the Pacific Northwest, period. That morning started a bit late, but we were in Crescent City before 11 a.m., just in time for a bagel, some coffee, and a really interesting response from a local as we chatted about the night before. A what? We were eating a bagel and having some coffee at a popular little coffee shop. Well, I was eating the bagel and drinking the coffee. My wife, on the other hand, was having none of it at the moment. <clears throat> it must have been all the chips she ate on the way there that morning. But we were in mid-conversation about the previous night when a lady, who looked slightly Native American for sure, turned around and asked us to repeat what we were saying. So we did. She had a pretty serious look on her face all of a sudden when she mentioned the weird language and the, when we mentioned the weird language and the size of whatever whoever it was that passed by the window. She used the word Sasquatch all of a sudden. <coughs> she
She looked over at her friend and the cash register and told her she'd be a minute and she took a seat next to us. She told us what she said she was allowed to say about the giant creature that roamed the redwoods of Northern California, as it had for a very long time. She said that we should not do anything to provoke or invite these things into the area we were at, nor should we entertain or entreat them into hanging around, period. She said they were not friendly, <clears throat> very uh, territorial, and have been known to take her people from time to time through the centuries. This had us on edge a bit, at least until lunchtime. We did some shopping in town and split up long enough to get some something for each other and eventually we met back up and finished shopping for family members back home. After that we hit the beach and went out to the boat docks and such for the rest of the day. On the way back we did stop off here and there to walk a bit around the forest, but I could sense my wife was becoming more and more uncomfortable with it as the day grew and the light faded. I didn't blame her, I too felt a little uncomfortable. We headed back into Hayauchi and grabbed a bit to eat and then back to the fifth wheel for a fire and some relaxation from the day before. Uh, it got too cold to hang out outside that evening. My wife's eyes, you could tell, were seriously darting around in the darkness looking, I believe, for any movement at all. Not very relaxing if you ask me. I was listening when we weren't talking for anything out of the ordinary, but nothing. Not a sound, but an owl or some other bird hooting in the night from time to time. After about 11 p.m., it was cold, so we hit the sack, dead tired, and spent. Hello, Big Red. <laughs> it was almost daylight when we'd wake up and begin to wonder if we were going to live to see the sun rise, <clears throat> or die before it did. Our fifth wheel was rocking back and forth really hard, which meant that there had been... There had to be several of whatever or whoever to make it move at such um, that much outside. Seconds later, it all stopped, and then we heard two slaps on the side of it towards the front living area. I immediately got up, grabbed my gun again, and turned on the outside lights. All sound and movement stopped at that moment. <clears throat> my wife scrambled out of bed and <clears throat> got behind me as we peeked through the curtains to see who was out there harassing us. Big red, ugly, scary, a freaking nightmare. That is all I could think of at that moment. My wife did not see it at first, but as soon as she did, she let out a gas followed by a short scream. She tried to stop from coming out by throwing her hand over her mouth. There are, well, there had been moments in my life up to that point that scared me to death. A couple tornadoes, a couple blizzards, convention were a few of them, but this, this is way beyond that. This was almost otherworldly scary. And just so you know, there were two of them, but the other only moved about between the trees behind the one that obviously did not care if it was seen or not. I was hunched over with arms as thick as my thighs, and I'm a pretty muscular guy, that dangled down or just past the knees. It was covered in hair that seemed to be at least two to three inches long and red. You could see it reflect on off the outdoor flood-type lights from the fifth wheel. I could see its teeth as it growled and flipped its lip at us. They seemed blocked, but I'm not completely sure about that. There could have been canines. <clears throat> its eyes were black and glints of red and yellow as it moved its upper body to look around here and there. It seemed, well, jittery, if you ask me. If it, like if it was ready to bolt if needed. The face, it was deformed-looking, and I've heard others make that same claim, too, and I, I get it now, looking back. It was massive and a scary-looking creature, and I mean creature. Yes, it may be some kind of North American primate. It did have some primate-type features to it, I admit, but it was still a wild and crazy-looking monster to us. My wife grabbed my hand as this massive monster took two large steps towards us in the fifth wheel. I know it was not the smartest thing to do, but I aimed that gun right between the eyes and was ready to pull the trigger. That thing stopped just a few <clears throat> feet shy of the fifth wheel. But I knew, it knew, we were there, and I got the strangest feeling that even though we stood in the dark inside, 
that this thing could plainly see us. I also think it saw my gun. Although I can't be sure about that, I knew it could see us. It reached out its hand and slapped the side of the fifth wheel pretty hard, and then pushed it with both its large re, uh, large hands really hard again. At that moment we saw the other one st stood there just inside the shadows that were now fa uh, failing as the light from the sun was starting to creep up over the mountains. <coughs> it was swaying back and forth, but we could not make out any features like that, like the other. It was still too dark. But as it swayed, we started to hear a growling that vibrated the whole place and had my wife telling me to be ready to shoot. But a few seconds later, they were gone. They disappeared into the woods from which they had come, and morning was breaking on the road again. We decided to pack it in and head over to Crescent City to spend the rest of our trip. The event or encounter, if you will, did not scare us off from the Pacific Northwest, not even close. However... It did give us a look at what is possible in the world and that there can be truth to many myths or legends out here. When we did get back home, we told our <clears throat> we, we only told our friends who were from the Pac West, uh, Pacific Northwest about our exp experience. They too believed, and one of them said they had a visual, he believed, of one running across an open area about 500 yards or so opposite him, opposite the hill he was on while hunting as a teen in Oregon. But... Until we return to the Pacific Northwest, that is our encounter story. Thanks, Shane and December. <laughs>